go into his office, I'm nervous as, and I'm like, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't really understand business properly. Um, been working with you guys now for a couple of years. Um, if you don't have anything after this, can you come help me and my yeah. business? And yeah. I remember he sat down with myself and Melinda mm. and he, he goes, I've <laughs> talked to all these people in, in your business and yeah. you're a little bit rough and ready and the team's not really enjoying things and they're always on edge. And he said, I've got one rule. If any of your people leave, I'm leaving. Oh, wow. And He's a clever man. It really resonated with me. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I know I'm passionate, but I'm too wrapped up in the pressures of the business. I need to sort of mm. show my team that I'm relaxed. Even though I'm feeling pressure, I shouldn't be putting that my pressure onto them. Yeah, and the secret that he said is to employ people within your business that are smarter than yourself. Mm. And that is so true because... And trust them. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Off Grid Down Under podcast and video series. Guys, welcome back to the podcast. I am so excited to give you this next guest. This is somebody that if you Google his name, you will not find much content about him online at all because he is very, very much an enigma of the industry, but doesn't really talk too much about himself. It's all about the company and it's all about the people that work with the company and the suppliers and the customers. And the man I'm speaking about is Vaughan Hindley. He is the owner of MDC Caravans and Camper Trailers. I've known Vaughan for quite some time now and have been at him <laughs> for many years to come and tell a bit of his story. A lot of people don't know that he has very humble beginnings back here in Queensland in Brisbane. He was raised in a really normal family environment, no silver spoon in his mouth. He had a job at uh, the Brisbane Casino as a croupier and he worked there with his wife and they started Market Direct which then became MDC Camper Trailers and he tells a bit of his story. I think we need to shoot many, many episodes to get a whole lot of this man's wisdom out and tell his story. But for now, we've got a really great episode with him. I'm so excited to bring it. He's a really genuine man, very knowledgeable man, a lot of wisdom and also very happy to talk about the things that they did wrong as well in the early days and really happy to share the limelight with all the people that helped him get to where the company is today. So enough of me, let's meet Vaughan and I really hope you enjoy this episode and don't forget to share it and tell your friends all about it. Okay, so where it all started right back in the day, I was 32 years old, I was working at the casino as a croupier and I was on eBay one evening and I bought 12 12 volt uh, electric kettles as a bulk lot. Got like, a like a kettle, boiling water kettle. Yeah, but a camping one. So it was like a 12 volt kettle. All right, okay, yeah. So it took a long time to actually boil water. But anyway, <laughs> essentially I bought this as a bulk lot, shipped it to my home and then resold it on eBay as single lots and made some profit. I think I made about $10 on each one and go, oh, this is great. Maybe I should buy some more yeah, yeah. Um, bulk lots like this. And so I ended up doing sort of sort of things like that. Around the same time, solar lights became a big thing um, in Australia. And I was buying solar lights at Crazy Clarks for $10 each, and I was selling them on eBay in groups of six for anywhere between $150 and $180. Now, at that time, I think it was around 2006, you know, you wouldn't have Crazy Clarks all over the country. So typically people 
were buying stuff from remote areas on eBay, and so it became quite successful. Yeah. Um, wow. And then it was time to find out where these solar lights came from, and then actually worked out they come from China. So my wife and myself um, actually bought our first half container of solar lights out of China. That's a pretty big deal because we're talking like 20 years ago or 18 years ago or something. Yeah, I think it's like probably 17 years ago. And yeah. we actually got a half a 20 foot container shipped to our house. And we un exciting. And we unloaded this container of solar lights. Um, <laughs> And our house wasn't quite big enough, so we had them everywhere. They were in the lounge room, they were in the bedrooms, they were floor to roof, they were in the kitchen. Because you don't think of that stuff when you just make an order. No. You don't think, where am I going to put it? No, and then you're just sort of just starting out. What kind of, how did we get to Camp Charlie? Well, okay, there's one thing before that. Oh, yeah. Uh, around 2007, there was a mini bike go-kart and ATV phase. I remember the phase. That happened. I remember. And we could actually, because we had experience sourcing solar lights in China, we've been doing a little bit. I've gone, well, there's a market there, let's go try that. And mm -hmm. so we became one of the biggest sellers on eBay of ATVs, go karts, motorbikes around 2007. And we were yeah. a pure online play. Yeah, yeah. And what we discovered that is, we actually put these in the trading post. We'd actually have a lot of success and we could get a higher price. For anyone that doesn't know, the trading post used to be a newspaper. Yes. <laughs> when we're bringing in these products, they're fairly large. And then we had to go find a warehouse. And so then we actually rented half a warehouse off our freight forwarder, which wow. I think we had about 300 square metres. And it was such a big deal for us. Yeah. I mean, are you still a croupier at the casino at this time? Oh, absolutely. This was like a part-time gig. And so... That's amazing. What a side was... hustle before side hustles were cool. Were cool. Yeah. So we've just rented about 300 square metres because obviously the house is too small and these products are, are, are larger. And one of the things that really got me out of the creepy edge of at the casino was during our breaks, and we'd have a 15-minute break after every one hour of working, mm. is they brought in computers into a little IT-type room that everyone mm. can use. Mm. And so mm. I'd be running up there every hour checking on how all the eBay sales are going. Oh, how, do we land in, how do we land in a factory this size? What happened? Something big has happened. Yes, so <laughs> we're renting space. We're getting very big in the mini bikes, ATVs, go-karts. And then it's finally, I think it's around 2011, we have to, I don't know, it's probably around 2009. We go get our first warehouse. The rent was... $110,000 per year, which was huge oh for us. Oh, my God. And it's actually just about two doors down from here. You wouldn't even be making that as a salary. Uh, no way. I don't get paid. Not for a long time. No, no. Back back then, like as a croupier. Like. Uh, no. I yeah. think our salary was around 36000 a year. Oh, my God. Just to put it in context, like, that's a huge investment. Yeah. And then yeah, wow. we move all this stuff from one from the warehouse, or well, we're renting part of the warehouse to yeah. our warehouse, and yeah. we only fill up about a quarter of it. So anyhow, that's our yeah, that's our first storefront, and so yeah. we were getting big into mini bikes, ATVs, go karts, which was huge. And then I've just come across a camper trailer tent that could be made yeah. in China, and I know that camper trailers and caravans are very expensive in Australia. Yeah, and I think at the time the cheapest camper trailer was around twelve thousand dollars for a soft floor. Yeah, I remember that. Exactly. And I could buy the tent out of China, fully made, for around $800. And I'm yeah. thinking, oh, here's an opportunity. So yeah. Yeah. we import a camper trailer tent, and it was the MDC 6005 was the model <laughs> at the time. And we literally bolted it to a garden trailer. Oh, I love and that. And that was our first camper, and it was so <laughs> agricultural. And we What's would, agricultural code for? Yeah, well, it's, it's rough. <laughs> rough. You know? I and love that, agricultural. <laughs> Always a salesman. Yeah, well, that's what, yeah, that's what, that's we what say. you do. Yeah. That's what you do. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first model. Yeah, Amazing. it's very basic. And you um, sold that out of that showroom? We did. Yeah. And we also sold them on eBay, and these things were flying out the door. And we, yeah. and well, because the price was right. So what, if they're 12000 by other people, yep. $12,000 by other people, what were you guys selling? We were for? selling them for 5000 yeah, and our build cost was about three thousand dollars, and they were just flying out the door on eBay yeah, all I day remember. long. Yeah, and so because you—that's your first go at disrupting a market. Yeah, love it. So you know, we were the first guys to actually do that, yeah, and there's a there's a lot to. of firsts for NBC, and we need to talk about those. I want to talk about that. today as we go through. Yeah, it's taken a long time to get to the level we are, mm. and 
but also we can't do that. We haven't done that on our own. There's been industry partners and associations that we're part of that have, have helped us grow on that journey, particularly so we'll when it comes to compliance. So, all right, so you've they're going like hotcakes. You're yes. selling your agricultural camper trailers. Very basic, a <laughs> camper trailer tent on top of trailer. Yeah. And so the next thing for us is how can we improve that product? Yeah. So how we need to add water tanks. We need to add power. Yeah. Toolbox on the front, and then the actual trailer itself was the next mission. Is how can we build a stronger trailer so it's not a garden trailer, so it's full yeah. off road. Yeah. But also how can we build that at an efficient cost with good quality and good quality parts. Yeah, okay. And then so you started your how how did you do that? Well so <laughs> the first trailer we made well the first camp we, we made was called the Off Road Deluxe. And then yeah. we went into something that was called the Extreme Explorer. Now that one was actually developed with a partner in China. Mm. Um very strong, uh very good material, so zinc and eel, um very good powder coating factory yeah. like in china that you can do things two ways you can cheapen out the materials yeah and get real tight on the amount of profit that you let your china partner make or you let them make a profit and they use good materials and you work on your brand and what you can sell here into the market and so are you going to build cheap and cheerful or are you going to build a quality product that is going to last a long time and mdc we've gone the quality route since yeah. day one because i loved that i i remember when you first started going down the china path and it was revolutionary it's not something that we would shy away from yeah. is our heritage and where the product actually came from because for me personally it didn't matter where i made it if i made it in australia or i made it in mm -hmm. china it was always going to have to be good quality and that was part of our branding yeah yeah and no, i remember those days i remember <laughs> the story i want you to have a Tell us what on earth you were thinking. <laughs> the Lamborghini and the tow ball on the back. Yeah. And towing camper trailers into shows. Because that, I didn't know, I did all, oh, we just heard about this man called Vaughn with a Lamborghini and a tow ball towing trailers. <laughs> it was all about standing out. 100%. So we were the small guys with the, with the, the new product to the market that no one had sort of seen before and it was different yeah. and there was all these big players well how do we stand out well I back then you don't think about things like that you're only thinking about sales and selling more product and standing out in the market you don't actually think about everything else that a business person or an accountant thinks of and we'll talk a little bit about I love that, that later yeah. too yeah well so how do we end up becoming I love this whole timeline thing mm. so how many showrooms are you in now? So we've got eight showrooms yeah. uh, in Australia. Yeah. We have three showrooms company owned in the US and yeah. we do have uh, US dealers as well. Yeah. So when I met you, so that was 12, 13 years ago, this is I heard about the Vaughan with the Lamborghini in the table. And so my late husband then was Steve Robson mm. and he had left the company that he'd been working with and came to work with you. And he, you made an impression, I've told you this before, but you made an impression on him because they, the show circuit was a big deal back in that day. It was everything because the internet wasn't as prevalent. And you were the only person that ever came on the stand and would go up to competitors, but introduce yourself, be up front and shake mm. their hand mm. and tell them who you were. And so that made a really big impression on him. He loved your upfrontness. So then when he was looking for a new job, he called you. Yeah. But you were just opening up in Sydney. So you were in Brisbane and opening up in Sydney. Like, yes. Yeah. And yeah. I guess we can talk about that a little bit more. Totally, and so love to. Yeah. We were a small team. Yeah. Um, we had family members working in the business. I had mates that I'd played football with that were actually working in the business yeah. and are still working in the business now. And so we would go to shows together. And as the business owner back then, I would do everything. I wouldn't do anything. Actually, I wouldn't ask my team to do anything that I wouldn't do. So quite often I was at the show. So oh, I would do the... Yeah you know, Monday to Friday and then fly in on the Saturday and do the show with the team and then get back to work on Monday. Yeah. And it was always us and the other side that your husband was working for. <laughs> and, you know, we yeah. would be side by side at a show and then yeah. we would set up our stand like this and then next day they've set up theirs and done theirs a little bit better. <laughs> and then that evening we're shuffling ours around. A wall. And it was always <laughs> us versus them. And then, I, you yeah. know, I ran into Steve quite often and always yeah. be sociable because you never know. And, yeah, yeah we open up a showroom in Sydney. We put an ad on Seek. Yeah. And I get an application on Seek 
and, yeah. and it's you know it's Steve Robson, Mr. And, uh, Camper Trailer, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he's got a huge following online. Um, obviously, we're uh, working with um, four wheel drive action, etc. Well, we were we were doing the whole personal branding thing before it was a thing, before mm. we even realised what it was. Yeah, For him. Yeah, so he had a face. Exactly, mm. and um, I had to ring him up and I go, yeah, yeah, no, nah, mate, you're full of shit, really. Is I that you? There. Is I it actually mean, Steve Robson? I know, I was there for the phone call, and it was. And he goes, well, mate, yeah. you know, um, <clears throat> I met this wonderful lady and <laughs> her three boys, and um, oh, you are going deep. I love oh, yeah, it. I, I was going personal with you. Yeah, <laughs> and um, you know, I've been told by the company I'm working for now if I get I have to go do 50 shows next year yeah and that's, um, right. that's not right for my personal situation at the moment I um, did I put my foot down yeah <laughs> my little foot I want to come work for you and I'm like well mate we're not going to say no you're a hero you're yeah. right right up our alley you've been working with our product we've been fighting you for two or three years now so uh yeah come, come on board come join the team <laughs> and he opened up Sydney yeah. that was a big deal that was huge for us then we just kind of grew from there it was just the growth it was just like it started rolling. Yeah, so, you know, mm. we opened up Melbourne, we opened up Perth, um, Adelaide came on a little bit later. Um, How did you have the guts to do all that? Uh, I guess it's, you know, it's um, kill them on the beaches, just have a go. And it was just all about getting sales and not thinking about <laughs> what those sales cost and actually if we're getting a return. Yeah. Um, you know, like there was plenty of plenty of money coming in, but there was mm. also plenty of expenditure at the same time. Yeah. Melinda yeah. and I have done very well. And when we talk about what we started with, it was always we started with five thousand dollars in two thousand five. Yeah. Now yeah. in twenty three, you know, we turn over north of a hundred million dollars a year. Mm. Um, but we don't take money out of the business. Everything that we earn actually goes back in so we can grow it. At some point, we'll, yeah. well, we pay ourselves a salary. Thank okay. God. Not up until about five years ago. Really? We started. It was like that. I mean, we've been, yeah. we've been on the edge a few times, but. Yeah, that's reality. It's yeah, truth. But the good thing yeah. is, um, I think something that we've done well is we've actually brought in a management team that helps run the business now. So we that's, won't get to a point we ever have yeah. those conversations. Or, <laughs> Oh, oh shit moments, I guess. Yeah, I think about, I guess we look back at um, my work ethic back in the day where I'd be working a job at the casino and then I would come home and do my, my, my eBay business. eBay business that turned into my full-time business. But it was up until recently, like 16-hour day, seven days a week, uh, I'm in my mid-30s, I can do that. I can't do yeah. that anymore. Yeah. But um, I guess it was just trying to uh, grow the business, be successful, have something for um, my family so they could live comfortably. Um, mm. But I, I don't think I want to leave a legacy or anything about that. I think it's more around my tenure. There's a lot of people that have been with me now with this business mm -hmm. for 10 plus years. And yeah, they have been. Yeah, I want them to be successful and comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, you know, having a comfortable place, like, you know, people that have dedicated 10 years of their life to you mm -hmm. and they may not be have a particular skill like an accounting or something, it's like well, all they can do is sort of work in this industry maybe Yeah. if they're not, you know, the, the higher up people in the company, I guess. Um just make sure that they've got somewhere to – they've given me 10 years, so I owe them the rest of my life, so I guess. I love that. And I actually believe you. Like, people can fabricate that answer, but I, I've seen it, witnessed it. There's people mm. that work in this company that have really humble – I'm a little bit chilled when I talk about They've got mm. pretty modest backgrounds and and you've seen – what they can do and you've upskilled people and trained people, work with them like they've started here and, and they just step up and up and up and take on new roles. And you change and you evolve. And so mm. I'm a much different person to what I was, say, <laughs> back in <laughs> ten years ago. 2013, 14, when yeah. when things are tough and you're on the brink and you you know, you you always your day to day is a struggle to actually survive, and you know I, yeah. we just came out of management meeting with uh, one of the ladies there, Kylie, national administration yeah, manager. Yeah, she's awesome. She worked with us back in 2013, and she uh, went away and had her uh, family. Yeah, and then she gave me a call back in 2016, and like she was just a little gem back then. Yeah, and she goes, "Hey, I'm looking for a job. Can I use you as a reference?" I'm like, "Absolutely not. You're coming back <laughs> working for me." 100%. And she's like. 
yeah, I'm not sure. You're a bit of a rat bag and a hard guy to work for back then. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I've changed a lot. Okay. And we can talk about that. Yeah, um, I would love to touch on that, what that means. Yeah, yeah, and when you look at mentors, who has been a big change in my life? Mm. And I'd have to say uh, Steve Doyle from BCF. Oh, yeah. Managing director of BCF, the creator back yeah. in the day. Yeah, um, we actually got oh, our products into BCF, and I remember going around BCF showrooms with Steve and actually setting them up I around the country too, yeah. with the um, off-road deluxe and extreme explorer. Yeah, and um, that was an exciting time. I mean, that was a real moment. That was kind of like when the brand went really national. Yeah, like you were national by doing all the national shows, but now all of a sudden you're in this big national company in all these so showrooms. It was a, a, a moment where the team was very proud because yeah. you get a lot when you're working for the first time with a big company like that um it's it's you know it's recognition of the hard work you put in however yeah when we talk about the business journey <laughs> yeah and my mentor steve yeah, um that's helped steve, Doyle, steve yeah. Doyle, who's grown this business a lot, like of steve's in his, a lot of steve's in your life yeah. <laughs> yeah um in 2015 he was finishing up with uh bcf yeah i talked to my business manager my contact there grant pierce yeah. And I said, hey, mate, can you get me in front of Steve Dawes so I can have a conversation? I'm looking for a business mentor yeah. that can help me out with my business. Yeah. Go into his office. I'm nervous as. Were you like, really? Because that was going to be one of my have yeah. you, that was going to be one of my questions. Have you ever felt out of your depth? Yeah, but I'm just like, well, you know, you've got to be in to win it. Go into his office. I'm nervous as. And I'm like, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't really understand business properly. Um, been yeah. working with you guys now for a couple of years. Um if you don't have anything after this, can you come help me and my business and um, let's get things right, particularly around inventory reporting. Like I didn't know anything about this. We didn't have any mm. systems in place. Mm. Um, and after a few days he said yes and he'd come work with me wow. for about a year and a half, three days a week. Wow. And that was amazing. Did that change everything? <clears throat> yeah. And yeah. I remember he sat down with myself and Melinda Mm. And he, he goes, I've talked to all these people in, in your business and yeah. you're a little bit rough and ready and the team's not really enjoying things and they're always on edge. And he said, I've got one rule is if any of your people leave, I'm leaving. Oh, wow. And He's a clever man. It really resonated with me. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I know I'm passionate, but I'm too – wrapped up in the pressures of the business i need to sort of mm. show my team that i'm relaxed even though i'm feeling pressure i shouldn't be ex putting that my pressure onto them yeah don't project it yeah. yeah and then we talk about um you know when kylie come back i'm a changed guy actually it was changed and that was because one of the things that steve taught me is be good to your team and the secret that he said is to employ people within your business that are smarter than yourself. Mm. And that is so true because... And trust them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're and, smarter, but let them be smarter. And that was like me yeah. back in the day. I'd do all the work. I remember. I remember because we knew you so well and you'd be up at 2 in the morning doing social media posts. Mm. <laughs> and emails. Oh, always emails. But, you know, like that's when you would do your posting. I'm going, I, I couldn't believe you were still doing your own Facebook stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, it shows your passion and your commitment, but it also shows that you wouldn't let go. Mm. Yeah. And you can't have a big business like this if you don't let go. No. Oh, and when we talk about the BCF business, uh, one of the first things Steve did, he actually worked out that we were only making 3% margin on the products we were selling the BCF. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that's and so, kind of not much. <laughs> yeah, so six months into working with us, yeah. we actually have to go in the BCF and I have to have the conversation and say, look, um, we need mm. to turn that business off because obviously 3% margin doesn't work for us. And mm. now that we've brought in a stock system, we understand our costs, yeah. we can sell, we need to sell stuff for a profit and that wasn't going to work. And mm. there wasn't enough in it for them after we had to raise our price to a certain point for yeah, them to be successful. it just didn't work anymore. And so one of the dis biggest disappointments is breaking that relationship, but at the end of the day, it was yeah. what was best for our business. You have your ups and you have, have your downs. Yeah. And the biggest down was, you know, Steve, when he passed, setting up for a show in Sydney. <laughs> and that was on the, job. on the job. That was difficult. And it was 
extremely difficult for myself, our team, us, and you know, we I flew the whole team in mm. for the um, funeral, I mean, and the most beautiful things ever. I had to talk at the funeral and have a speech, which is very emotional for me. And every time I think about it, I break down. So we'll try and stay strong. But well, thank you, you know, There's so much respect. There. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So when we talk about downs, that's a down. But having working with the big man, that was an absolute positive, and mm. he helped install the culture and the camaraderie that our team have and still have. Mm. You know, um, I remember in 2013 we made our first DVD up in Cape York, and there was Steve, <coughs> yeah, um, and we got Mick and Keith. And he Keith was still with us. Keith had only been with us for two weeks. Mick had already been with us for about five years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people still get those three mixed up. I know. <laughs> I know. Particularly Mick and Steve. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's such, it's such a nice thing. It's such a, like, uh, yeah, I haven't just trying to compose myself too. <laughs> mm. There's some, um, that is something about this company, which I just don't think happens everywhere. And this is being really honest. It's just there's people that have been here for 10 years plus and there's a reason why they're here. And, and we talk about every company talks about a family value and everything, but it really is family values. Like here I am in the company, you know, all these years later. Yeah. And I let you know, a bit like Kyle, you know, I'm like, you know, I want to make the change. And you're like, we'll come and do some work here. Mm. I'm like, you know what? I would love that. I, well, would, I would feel so at home. It was that. always a plan of, for yourself and Steve yeah. to move was, from Sydney to Brisbane. That was always the plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, my father was a clerk at Telstra mm -hmm. when it was called, I think it went into Telstra in 2000, but before then it was called Telecom. Telecom. I'm old enough, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah. my yeah. mother was a Hansard um, court reporter. Yeah. And she, yeah. she worked in the Brisbane courts and they just write down everything that everyone said. So she can actually write at 180 words per minute. She can write? It's crazy. Yeah, oh shorthand. My God. Before oh, they the brought shorthand. In, yeah. Before they brought in the, the fancy yeah. machines. So. Oh, God, God, love her. Yeah, and I think that's really important to sort of know that is that it's very authentic and you haven't lost touch on sight of that, which is really cool. So what about, you've talked about partnerships. Um, we touched on that before. So that's probably a great lead in now. You said you, there's been a lot of people that have helped us get to here and get to this size and get into the US and get you know be growing at the rate that you're growing at like it's crazy yeah and i guess as a business one of the turning points for our business particularly in the camper trailer space is i had a visit from ron chapman and jason plant from mm -hmm. the queensland caravan industry association mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um <clears throat> i think it was like around maybe 2007 2008 and they're like hey We've been to a show, we've identified that you have some compliance problems with your products, we'd like to talk to you about that. And I was like, well, I'm shaking in my boots, I'm going, this is terrible, oh no, the whole business is going to collapse. And so what they said is, hey, you've got these problems, Yeah. we'd like to talk to you about them. And I'm like, yeah, cool, tell me, what do I need to do? Yeah. And they're like, well, you need to go do this, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, cool. And we just went out and did it. We're like, hey, we want to have a compliant product, we want to grow our market in camping and caravanning yeah. and i know to this day ron chapman tells everyone about it really because it comes back to me and he yeah. goes remember back in the day does. when we came to your office and you're yeah. shaking in your boots and i'm like yep <laughs> well that's really cool and you still got a really good very very big relationship with the association so i know that this is one of the most compliant companies now going in the industry when you talk about first and particularly because our products important important mm -hmm. is ever since the company has started i think since 2011 when we got serious so we built the first forward fold camper in china mm -hmm. we had a gentleman working that had worked in other businesses in caravanning and camping that come across to us his name is uh, bradley giddy mm -hmm. came across with us in 2011 and he's been working just recently retired a few months ago. Yeah. But he would do six months since, well, six months of his year was working with our factory in China. Yeah. Um, and so first hard floor camper. Yeah. First hybrid caravan built in China was from our factory. So everything that you see in the market now is a derivative or a copy of what we did back in 2013 yeah. when it yeah. comes to hybrids. That we long had ago, a, we had a, It was the first one we did. Yeah, wow. And my brother Kent actually towed yeah. it up. Um, 
Billy Gates bluff for a four-wheel drive I action DVD. That. I know, crazy. And geez, it was rough as. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you look at the sticky kit on the side of it, wow, it's <laughs> so <laughs> antiquated. There's nothing like that now. Yeah, yeah. But you were doing it, you know, and it was a first. Yeah. So there's no benchmark. And when you talk about compliance, um, RV map, we're a part of yeah. the RV map program. Yeah. Which we're is. We're going to do some episodes on that. Yeah. And yeah. RV map is an industry accreditation and it's just so many hoops to jump. Yeah. But it ensures to the customer that they're getting a compliant product. Yeah. Now, when you look at imported product at this point in time, there's only three companies that have achieved it mm. with with products coming out of China, and we were the first. That's amazing. So you're actually lifting. That's what I like. You're lifting the benchmark, so people are having to step up. So it's only a good thing for customers. Yeah. And you don't automatically get this accreditation by paying money. At mm. least three times a year, they come through your factories and check and look for problems. Now, the good thing about us is a few years ago, and because we're always passionate about creating a better product and following compliance, we actually had James Field come across to our business, mm. who was the compliance manager for the uh, caravan industry of Australia for around six years. Yeah. And he's decided, hey, I've done the industry thing now. I want to come across to a private company and yeah. and grow that. So that's been a huge change for us. ISO 9001 accreditation, that was a big yeah. jump for us as well. Yeah. Um, you know, all these things in our business where we've actually had to get a lot of people and a lot of processes and, mm. uh, and you know, spend a lot of money on building the infrastructure to get these products out is what makes us a little bit different to everyone else. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And so on that, you talk about, I'm still trying to understand what drives you on because then you don't, you sort of talk about, yeah, you don't really want to leave a legacy or anything that doesn't convey you doing it for the people of the company. Um, and I guess you're doing it for your customers too, like you're doing it because you're bettering the industry. Like you, 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 you're changing, it's, it's changing because of what MDC does. Yeah, I'm not, oh. That's the number one thing too, right? Without yeah. customers, there is no company. Nothing. Yeah. And <laughs> once a year, our team will get together and yeah. people that have been good to me in my business, within my business, will get a junket once a year where we all go out to the Big Red Bash <laughs> and we spend a week with our customers at the Big yeah. Red Bash. Yeah, um, in Birdsville. <clears throat> it's a music festival if you're not sure what that is. Yeah. yeah, and it's a good time for our guys to actually build relationships with our customers, talk about mm. the product. What's going well? What's not going well? Um, you know, getting that one-to-one -one feedback, and even yeah. you know, when we do go out with those trips, sometimes we'll you know make promotional videos yeah. with our customers, and yeah. there's a very sort of clicky group, and they're there year after year. And <laughs> I'm in that group now. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy to get to the centre of Australia, but yeah. what that was all about for us too is. You always had this, oh, this Chinese product's going to break down or, yeah. or they're going to be a problem. Well, what it was for us is we can prove that we can get our customers and ourselves to the yeah. centre of Australia and back without and issue. And film it and mm. prove it. When I met you, so that was like 13 years ago, you said, Melissa, if I'm not, if I'm not working, I'm sleeping. Correct. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> That's next level. And you only slept about four hours a night. What's being brought now is I can focus on any part of the business I want mm. that I see may need some help rather than trying to focus on everything. I can really, I've got the time now to sort of narrow down. What would your role be? Like you're the owner of the business, you've got a general manager, you've got all these people in key roles, so you kind of, what do you call yourself? Oh, I call myself the owner, I guess. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I guess um, fixing you across every part of the business. Oh, absolutely, and mm. it all comes down to experience. So, when you're talking to managers within the management team, and they have an issue, a lot of those things I've actually encountered before, and I can say, well, this is what happened last time. This is what we did yeah. to fix it. If you've got a successful business and a successful mm. team and you measure things properly, yeah. then you should be able to really overcome any, any um, challenges. Any challenges, I think. Tell us quickly about the US market before we let you go. Yeah, the US market is uh, new for us. We've been in there now yeah. around uh, three years. Yeah. We're not having a the success there that we actually have in Australia. Yeah, okay. Um, What's that? The, what do you think? Well, the products, it's completely turned on its head. In Australia, we're yeah. considered a budget-end product, even though our, you know, 
the quality is up there with all the Australian made and our systems are up there because we use the same yeah. components. Yeah. But in the US, we're seen as a premium product. We're very expensive. Yeah. The so, off-roading off over there, overlanding, is not as popular as what it is in Australia. So again, you're ahead of the curve. Exactly. Yeah. Population being 30 million, their population being 330 million. Yeah. We just need a little piece of that pie. Yeah, you just want to be there for that. Thank you so much, Vaughn. Like, <laughs> I wasn't joking when I said I've been trying to get you to do this for a very long time, but um, I think you see the value really in sharing your story and and just letting people know. Like this whole podcast series and, and video series is all about not just about letting people know what we're doing, but inspiring people and helping people and, and sharing stories, isn't it? So Absolutely. Um, we have an amazing team and I guess at the end of the day, people can try to copy what we do, but they can never be us. And 100%. so yeah. the idea is, you know, we have been, I have been very secretive yeah. about how our business works and who the people are within our business. Because you have been, let's just be frank, you've been copied ridiculously oh absolutely but yeah. we've always risen to the top and it's always been the people that we have within our business that stands out and above everyone else's yeah. and so now i guess it's our team's time to shine i love it <laughs> and uh, that's yeah. going to keep you very busy I Melissa. Know. Well, that's what that's my passion is to share the story so mm. thank you very much it's been awesome i hope you guys have gotten so much out of this if you have any questions, put them down below. Um, if you want to share this with people that you think would get a lot of value out of it, if you want to keep following these stories, make sure you keep tuning in. We're going to drop these episodes weekly. We're going to get you back because right there's on. so many stories. And But I really, really appreciate you getting personal there. I really haven't seen that very many times. So it's no. a privilege. <laughs> yes. And we've only just touched the surface. We really hope you enjoy listening in. Be sure to follow MDC on all of our socials. And if you want to like and share and visit the MDC website to find more of our upcoming episodes, we'd really love that. See you off grid and happy caravanning. Comfortable place. And I'll continue on. I love that. I'm going to keep that in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Cool. We're in a factory. Yeah. <laughs>